Hey, what's going on? Let's make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Hey, what's going on? It's Glenn and Cameron again for day 25 of 30 days to 2,500 bucks. I'm excited. It's a rainy day in Georgia. I mean, like crazy, crazy rainy. And it's freaking cold. But we're going to warm it up. So this is the 25th day. Just to, because people are coming, because most people tend to show up like five minutes after the webinar starts. So I will speak for not five minutes, but just to let you know what's going on. If you're new, welcome to the G-Verse. And this is how the webinars go. If you are, you have a question about anything that's pertaining to the webinar and when I'm going through it, just go over there to your little box, Put in your question, and I'll answer it after the presentation. Also, if you're new, you'll need a pen, paper, and a calendar because some of the tasks take a little time. And twenty-five, you know, thirty days to twenty-five hundred dollars is an action-based course. It's it's about doing stuff. It's about objectives. It's about goals, and it's about tasks because. If you've taken the course from day one, and this is day 25, and realistically, if you were here every day, it would probably take you 30 something days to do what's already been covered. So that's something that I've been a little concerned about because, you know, it's like, hey, you know, 30 days, 2,500 bucks. And this program has been validated over and over again. Several people have started from either scratch or had a business and pretty much kicked 2500 bucks in the ass uh, we've got one person close to 40 g's so this is quite effective if you do the work and let me emphasize you must do the work if you don't do the task if you only do some of them you're not going to yield the same results as the people who are really rocking it out some of the stuff doesn't make sense to you because it's like what does that have to do with business glenda and the thing is it has everything to do with business because the stuff in this course is designed to help promote and improve your human relationships, which have everything to do with business. So with that, we're going to rock and roll and we're going <clears> to <throat> excuse me, talk about a topic that everyone wants to really, really know about. But this was uh, day 24. Did you write yourself a congratulations letter or email? I'm going to speak on why this is part of the course. Many, many people were groomed, brought up that praise is bad. Some people have had the other thing where they receive way too much praise and haven't done shit. So if you're one of those people that finds it hard to take a compliment or if you take a compliment, you deflect it. And deflection is, well, it's really wasn't that great. though. Well, it's just something I pulled out of the closet. Well, Yeah, that's called deflection. If you're doing that stuff, you are reducing your personal power because you don't even believe in you. And if you don't believe in you, why should other people believe in you? It sounds like a simple thing, but it's kind of like a glacier or an iceberg, more so an iceberg. If you see an iceberg floating around in the sea, you just see the tip. What's below the sea level is way more than what you see and that's what deflection does it's just a tip of something that is much much larger so get in the habit of congratulating yourself i mean you don't have to throw a party you don't have to be overly gratuitous with it but get to the point where you can appreciate yourself and you you'll be amazed that once you start to truly appreciate yourself from an internal level and there's nothing like i said nothing crazy nothing ostentatious it's just you appreciate yourself Others will, too. Already covered that. Sheet of paper, pen and pencil, calendar. Ah, for those of you who are new, this may seem a little weird, but we do it every webinar day. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. Yes, <laughs> this is the day. Getting paid. Many people start a business for the wrong reason started to get paid and I know you're going what wait, wait, wait that's why we're here no 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 that's not why we're here if you start a business to solve a problem 
your chances of getting paid are much higher than if you start a business to get paid. The nuance there is distinct and it's clear, but when you increase your service, you increase your profits. So you you got to really look at that. And also, there's making money and then there's getting paid. There are m- many businesses that make money. Some make a million a week. Some make a million a day. But when you go down to that thing called net profit, it's not a lot there. It's very razor thin margins, razor thin margins. And many businesses exist on that. And it creates a problem, a serious, serious problem, because the net profit is how you get paid. That is the real deal. That's the stuff you put in your pocket. That's the stuff you buy your Starbucks coffee with. That's the real stuff. And there's not been a lot of focus on that because, you know, people get caught up in the trickeration of the financial of the capital markets of the stock market. Of you know, The real reality is if you are a country or a city or a town, government, state or whatever, and you don't produce something. You're more of a consumer and those who produce stuff typically, because I will give you a big exception to that, typically produce stuff, and make money. We have what's called a rule of law in the United States of America. Many people have bastardized and manipulated the rule of law because you have certain legal entities, lawyers, firms that go out and sue people who have money to get their money for really providing no service. It's just manipulating the law for their personal or corporate gain. This to me is an abomination of the American public of the system. It is crazy. So there are people at a certain level because they understand the system and they need the rules. And one of my sayings, don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the fucking rules so you can win. They know the rules and they're winning, but they're not producing anything. That's a problem long term, because when you have people who go out and just take money from folks who have and don't produce anything, it creates a problem, it creates a vacuum, and it puts a lot of money in really small sectors, which creates a dichotomy, which creates differentials, which, you know, could create war. This is the type of stuff that creates wars because... Everyone's not an idiot. Everyone's not lazy. There's a lot of people out there that went to work every day. There's a lot of people that did what they were supposed to do and they got screwed. The game has changed, but there were people who did what they were supposed to do by the rules of the game. But once again, the game changed. They got screwed. And you have this huge, huge, huge problem in America right now that has rippled throughout the world. Now, for those of you who understand the difference of being a producer versus a consumer. If you truly understand that, you'll never go hungry. You'll never worry about putting food on the table for your kids once you truly understand that concept. But as long as you have a consumer mindset, which is making money, you'll hear people say these things. I'm making money. I got to make money. I got to get paid. You know, I got to get paid. Not getting paid. I got to get paid making money, the process of getting there. But do you ever talk to anyone that's like, you know, that says, I'm really happy with what I get paid. I've talked to a few people like that. It's like, yeah, I got paid. I'm I'm feeling great. Yeah, my check is nice. There's a difference. And uh, frequently the people who are like really happy with that are producers. They're producers. And why are they happy? Because they had a very large input on how much they got paid. So when you are part of someone's system where your your income's dictated to you, well, you are an accountant and we're going to pay you $55,000 a year because that's what accountants across the board make. That's the median income is 52, but we're going to pay you 55 because we really like you. And if you're a super special extra accountant, we're going to pay you like 75 because we'll put you up there toward that top or upper percentile. Any way you look at it, someone has dictated your income. But when you're a business owner, a hustler, you dictate your income which means you're much happier with your paycheck because you created it so think about that really really think about that because the distinction is very very clear between making money 
there's companies that are making money right now to the tunes of hundred million dollars this month and before December they're gonna be out of business they're making money but they're not making profit they're not getting paid getting paid is very very critical I will um, speak on this in two parts because this is the you know internal question how much cash to pull out of uh, out of your business and it should be your not you I screwed up see I will call myself on my mistakes but I'll fix that later but the whole deal is how much cash do you pull out of your business that's a big big question and it depends on a lot of stuff I'm gonna give you the reason that I am so excited about being an author a video producer, blog, you know, all the stuff I do. To tell you that why I'm excited, I have to go back to the beginning. When I was a little kid, yes, my inner child is coming out in today's webinar. I was a little kid, there was these two big catalogs. Actually, yes, there was two. There was the J.C. Penny Big Book Catalog and the Sears and Roebuck Big Book Catalog. I mean, they were like literally thick as a phone book. Which, you know, for those of you who have never seen a phone book that thick, because for many of you haven't, literally two and a half to three inches thick. Full of stuff. Candy, clothes, stuff for the house, just stuff. And they used to call it, you know, I would just sit there and I write all these goals, all the stuff that I wanted. And because I was poor, I was like, well, what's the best way for giving? Well, if I can get this wholesale, I can get more because I don't have a lot of money. So I want to make more when they go far. And I went through this whole process of giving in businesses and being a reseller. Essentially, if you don't manufacture whatever you're selling, you are a reseller. There's people who resell the Internet that you're using. There are people who resell the computers that you're using. And then there's the people who actually manufacture the computers and have their own distribution networks, which oftentimes inc includes 30 party resellers. Well, when you're a reseller, you operate frequently in the red. 30 day net, 60 day net, 90 day net, in some rare cases, 120 day net, which means you get your merchandise, but in 30 days, you got to pay that bill, 60 days, you got to pay that bill, 90 days, you got to pay that bill, and 120. And that is the reason that, you know, Amazon FBA, because we're going to talk about that quite a bit in 30 days to 2500 is so effective because all of the markets are extremely inefficient all of the markets all of the markets extreme and this is where you can pull out the differential of price points give you an example uh i helped a client do this because we're, we put together their fba stuff could not believe there was a watch that was in it was tj maxx and the watch was in TJ Maxx, wasn't even on sale. It was like 80 bucks. And I was like, okay, what you do is you got a TJ Maxx card, you know, get one. If you can get a card, make sure you buy a lot of shit at once to get, the, you know, that discount. And there was coupons. She had a coupon from the paper. So she was able to get this watch for $50. Then she went to all the TJ Maxx's in her area and got that same watch for 50 bucks. Put it on Amazon FBA. The watch sells for $300. Now, in a perfect world that makes no sense whatsoever it makes no sense it's like well why doesn't tj maxx go ahead and put that watch up on amazon fba and get the money themselves because they're highly highly inefficient highly inefficient now these inefficiencies at some point are going to go away i figure we got a good decade because the machines are so large they're so huge that it's like when you when a pitcher throws a, a fastball and once it goes two feet, it's like trying to stop it. It's too much velocity. It's already out of his hand. It's gone. You're, you're not. The only thing that's going to stop it is when it gets where it needs to. That's how these big companies are. They're so inefficient that even if they have a guy, someone at a desk who's listening to this pot, this webinar and he's like, yep, that's true. We're working on it. It's going to take them years to fix the problem. Years, because. Many of these capital markets are based on supply and demand and just pushing product. They're not based on efficiency. Now, there are companies such as Google, very efficient. Um, Apple, very efficient. Microsoft, not that efficient, but working on it. IBM, 
kind of milled away efficient because the thing is that is the corporate goal to do more with less to become more efficient but you know the execution of that has left many pockets of income and opportunity for hustlers because that's the whole reason amazon fba works because the markets are inefficient from top to bottom i'm talking about if you live in your small town two by two you will find inefficiencies in your town that you can find product to ship to fba now because of these inefficiencies it creates opportunity to resell however unless you're getting 30 60 90 120 day net terms which means you get the product before you pay for it you have to come out of pocket and pay for your inventory which creates another problem since you're always in the position of having to buy inventory unless you build up a serious inventory before you start pulling out cash because that's what we're going to talk about this whole webinar it will be very hard to downright impossible for you to reach critical mass now this is why I like what I do. I went through that uh, when I was in the contract office furniture business. I was in debt to the tune of six figures every month. Pay bills off, get money, pay bills. It was an endless cycle. On paper, it looked great. You know, in the nearest times, there was a hundred thousand, two hundred, four hundred thousand dollars in my bank account, but none of the money was mine. <laughs> it was none of the money was mine. I was just like, maybe, maybe that time it was four hundred thousand. I think maybe forty was mine. I think 40 was mine. And when you look at that, and that's how people get in trouble because they don't really separate the personal expenses from the business expenses. But I knew very well what was mine and what wasn't. And when I did the first book and it made $62,000 the first 14 months, it was all profit. It was like, well, okay, it wasn't all profit. It was like 90 something percent profit, like uh, seriously, 97 percent profit. I had never experienced anything like that, not even in the storage auction business where I did buy things and got incredible deals, lifetime deals, stuff that still makes me smile when I think about it. But to produce and to have the distribution system that the Internet, YouTube, the, the it just was mind blowing. And for many people, you know, $62,000 in 14 months is not a lot of money. But based on my perspective, I have had two hundred thousand dollars in sales and earned less. You know, it was just a whole new thing because that's you know one of the things we're going to talk about in you know thirty days, twenty you know once we get to that point because being a producer puts you ahead of the curve in so many ways if you can do it using digital products, things that you can create out of your own imagination. Or your own experiences or just knowledge that you have from working in the world. But just to give you an idea why I am so excited about what I do. Now, let's get back to people who are running traditional businesses. How much cash to pull out of your business? You know, because the thing is, if um, you really think about it, that's not the question. That's really not the question. The better question is when to pull cash out of your business. Because this goes back because, you know, there are people who have a business, but they treat it like a hustle. And then there are people who have a hustle that treat it like a business. And anyone that treats their hustle or business like a business is going to come out much better. When I first started Conundrum Media, it was a hustle. I had no long term aspirations for that company whatsoever. It was a three year churn and burn. Hopefully then, you know, I would write all of this, this, this book. Because I still am working on it in my mind. And I'll get this great publishing deal. And I'll get to do the book tours. And I'll get to be on, you know, Oprah. Or maybe Kelly Ripa and Regis at the time. Or, or I don't know, Strahan was there. You know, that's where my mind was. And But I treated my hustle like a business from day one. And it snowballed on me. And it turned into a business. See, your many hustles can matriculate into a business. That is possible. It's very, very possible. Typically, most hustles are going to be short term, a matter of weeks or maybe seven, eight years. But for you, the better question is when you pull cash out of your business. And that brings up another set of questions and another mindset and another process. Because if you haven't really thought about this thing from a business standpoint, I'm speaking 
Greek to you, like Hebrew Greek. Now, the answer is not simple. and It's not a yes and no question. It, the answer depends on your goals. Because if you don't have any goals, you could very well do something that doesn't really benefit you long term because you never really thought about it. it depends on your cash flow. It depends on your life goals. It depends on your life map. Because what we're doing here in Hustle University, 30 days, 2500 bucks, is get your life together and integrate your business into your life. Whereas many people who have a job, they have to integrate their life into their job. So that's one of the powers of living a life of design and intent. You can build and integrate any way that you show want to, so that you desire. So looking at that question, we're going to give to some numbers. This is going to be a two parter because there's some things that have to be done to get to the proper answers. Now, how much cash do you pull out of your business? Short answer if your business is brand new and you want it to grow, unless you just got crazy margins going back, that's why I told you about the publishing day. From day one, anything that I sold, I didn't really have to put back in the business because the business didn't have, it was virtually no overhead. Once I bought my domain name and once I paid for my hosting, which I paid for the year up front, I really didn't have a lot of capital investments in the business. I really didn't. I could have. I could have went out and got an office. I could have went out and did all kinds of stuff that would have been boo-boo the fool foolish. It, it wasn't required. I mean, people were like, man, why don't you do this for your website and do this and do this? I just kept looking at where's the money coming from? The money's not coming from the website. <laughs> money's coming from YouTube. So instead of investing, because, you know, I, I went out and I talked to someone and I think it was going to pay like 3000 for a new website. And I looked at that 3000 Then I was like, where's the traffic coming from? The traffic's coming from YouTube. So I invested ten grand into two Mac computers and a very nice camera, which was an investment in YouTube. Worked out better because if I put that same money into that website, I would have not gotten that money out yet. Because the money wasn't coming from the website. The YouTube videos were directing traffic to the website. So I actually went to a video course. Uh, one of my friends held here in Georgia. I went there. It was like 80, 60, 70 bucks well spent. I learned a lot of things I didn't know. And, you know, I, I studied that because the thing is your business will treat you well if you treat your business well. But if it's brand new and if it's like wah, wah, infant stage, you can't pull any money out. Unless you have crazy margins and most people don't have crazy margins. So we're going to have to talk about a method of because the thing is. You got to eat, right? You got to pay the mortgage. You got to pay the car note. You got to you got you've got kids in daycare. You got to put them there. There are bills. There's obligations that you have to deal with. that are not going away just because you have this idea that, hey, I want to start a business. I told my daughter, I was like, you know, you're not feeling so hot about yourself, but you are clean. You don't have any personal debt, none whatsoever, none. You have a blank slate. You're in the catbird seat. You just don't know it because right now there are many people that heard me say that they wish they were in a position where they had no personal debt and they could just start all over. But since we have these things going on, you, you got to look at it. It's like, OK, Houston, we have a problem. I'm uh, sitting here on the porcelain throne and I need a little extra TP and there's none on the roll. There's none under the sink. We got a problem. So we got to fix that. All right. So we're going to start with, say, your business is six months old and your business grosses 2000 a month. You could take 10 percent off the top and not kill it. I would say once again, you know, if, don't take anything. Unless you have crazy margins, because everyone's situation is not that different. But 10%, so $2,000, 10%, that's $200. That's what you can take off and not cripple your business. If your business is making $20,000, same 10%, that's $2,000. If your business is making $50,000, 10%, it's 5Gs. Now, this is what I did. I just gave you an answer. If you're making two thousand and you need two grand, you've got to do everything you can to get your business up to twenty grand so you can pull that two thousand out. Essentially, what you have to do 
with your business is get it to a certain level where it can support you. But you have to it's like a baby. It's essentially like a baby. You have to feed it. You have to change it. You have to, you have to do everything for it before it grows up and turns 35 and then takes care of you. <laughs> but seriously, you, you, you have to do that. So 10 percent. And that's where you need to stay unless, once again, and I will repeat this, unless you have crazy margins. Like um, one of my clients has a business. I can't tell you what kind it is because, the, I mean, it's really, really esoteric. But it's a service business. So she's been able to live off her income the first two months because, like me, with the digital stuff, there's not a lot of overhead. So she's able to pull out money and she charges a good fee. But you are selling as a reseller that's not going to happen because you know going again with because i've helped a few people with amazon fb a lot of folks don't know this i do a lot of stuff and i don't talk about it i've helped a few people get their things up and everyone that started off with nothing had to reinvest had to reinvest because if you could start amazon fba with 50 bucks and if you started today with 50 dollars and you reinvested and took no profit at the end when you filed your taxes you made no money because you spent all and that's the, and that's another thing we're going to talk about a little later you know a corporation spending money versus earning money you know and get that um where it's up to you know a hundred thousand a month in sales then at that point you can start taking all kinds of stuff off and you're not hurting it because you know your 10 percent at that point is 10 g's a month and, you know so most of the money goes back in the business. You have to look at it like that and you have to look at it how growing. And there will be a solution to that conundrum in this section. There will. Trust me. Love me a long time. So because this is what happens and this is where many people are. Business is legs up. Because I knew because this actually happened to us for a little while in the storage auction business because we were doing well. But I had to dial back my personal stuff. I mean, really dial it back so we could put more money into the storage auction business. And, you know, it was very short term. It was like six weeks, six weeks, eight weeks where I didn't buy shit, didn't do anything, didn't go out. Everything just went back in the business and we got to a point where it could support two people. You may have to do that for a longer period of time. You may have to do that for a year or two. You may have to. There's some businesses. They did that for five, six years. I mean, talking about <clears throat> living on soup, you know, and the thing many people understand that you can have a business and it's very profitable. But once again, if you thought about your goals, like if you want this business, like just just say you you're building a business that eventually you want to sell. There's a lot of stuff that you have to do. You need to do it, you know, probably not just an LLC, but then go ahead and incorporate it because it'll be easier to sell shares. Because what you can do is say, say you're going to do Dead Cows or Us, Inc. And you want to, you start it when you're 30, right? But you know at 55 that you may not want to leave the business completely, but you're going to want a big cash out because you're going to get some things retired. So you do or in corporation and you have the shares and everything you, you get your audit financials you do everything that so when a really savvy person comes in to look at your business they'll see that you've set this business up to be sold from day one there's audited financials you you see year to year growth you've got all of that stuff which makes their evaluation very easy but when they have to dig and your business could be worth buying but if they have to dig they're going to lowball you because you haven't done the proper things to make your business sell worthy not saying that it's not worth selling and it's not saying it's worth the, not worth the price you want. But because you didn't do the proper presentation, you're going to have a hard time getting that price out of someone. So <clears throat> if you you know take too much. And this is this is where many uh, I'm not picking on anyone, but I see a lot of YouTubers resellers there in this the spot that, you know, they have operating capital of 500, maybe 1500. Uh, maybe 2000 if you have been in the resale game for two three years and your operating capital's not at 10 g's 15 g's 20 g's you didn't take that time to reinvest and live very leanly to get to that point because if you've been reselling for because there are many people i watch on youtube they have the talent that's not the problem the, the knowledge base that's not the problem the problem is discipline and financial discipline and obligations because if they could take their talents and abilities for a year 
and just plow up the, you know, put that stuff in the business, reinvest uh, profits back in the inventory. A lot of people that, you know, many of you, if you watch a lot of YouTube, some of the people you know, they would be making 150, 200, 300,000 net, whereas struggling. Same people, just different business practices because they have the the important stuff, the knowledge, but they don't have the financial education that will put them on the right path. Because my financial education is the reason that I got rid of blogs because recently I got rid of everything. Storage structure, show guns gone. The uh, only thing that's left is hustlers food because if you look for stuff, you're going to see like the fake don't the, where you go to like the porn site. So like, oh, wait a minute. No, that's a porn site. I don't know why they do that when you get rid of a domain name. But I cleaned it up because what I taught you in, in the first week is like, where do you put your efforts? You put your efforts where the money comes in. And if they did that same thing, some of these people will be, just be blown away at the money they can make. But once again, they're grown. And if you've heard me say this before, I'll say it again. I am not grown. I am still a child of the world and the universe. I still have much to learn. As much as I know, there's way more I don't know. And as long as I keep that attitude, it keeps me hungry. It keeps me studying and it keeps me going forward. But this is a very, very critical and pivotal part of what you do with your business. Because if you could just for a year reinvest get it groomed up you'd be shocked at how much money you'd be earning you'd be shocked because say your business earns five thousand a month gross then say you've got some high margins and then you take two take two thousand off twenty two hundred bucks off to live imagine if you could put that twenty two hundred dollars back in the business for just six months where it would be it may double it might even triple on you in six months All right. I'm going to help you out because I was like you in a very tight financial situation. I call this the math of getting paid. This is why I urge you to have a hustle and a business. I call it the boarding house solution. I was there and I was freaking trapped because I was making enough money to pay rent. But then I couldn't accumulate enough of it because when you go from a boarding house situation where they let you pay rent every week. Awesome, right? Wrong. Because you never save up enough to you never reach enough trajectory or liftoff power to get out of there. So. I had a hustle and I had a job. I used the money from one of them to bank and I used the money for the other one to live on because you know, I was making such freaking low income. There was no way that I could pay what little bills I had. And also have enough money to get the fuck out of there. And that's when I had the night that, you know, if you see those two windows, because I had stuff taped on those little blinds. They may be the same damn blinds that were in there when I was in there, because who knows? But I came up with my hustle. I came up with a plan. And that's what got me out of there, because you, you need to have two tracks of income essentially to be succinct and tell you what you need to do. You've got a business. Fine. You got your business and it means you, you may have to dial down your business because we talked about that. And, you know, in the, in the 20 days, you know, day 20, 21, 22, where you can <clears throat> grow your business slowly, but put all efforts and focus. Well, not all efforts, but most, you know, the money that that business earns, you can put back into that business and let it grow and let it grow and let it grow. That's why I've always said from day one since I've been on YouTube, you need multiple streams of income. Because let's say you have five streams of income and let's just say none of them were spectacular. They were fifteen hundred bucks a piece. Five times fifteen hundred is seventy five hundred. You could live on two and let the other three go reinvest and build those businesses. That is how you get ahead. That's how you grow your business. That's how you become wealthy. Not spending everything that you have, not living to the capacity of your income. Now, this is your task. Day one of getting paid. First place that you start is a place that most folks don't want to start. You're going to do your household budget down to the bubble gum tonight. I mean, gas, Starbucks, you know, uh, chicken McNuggets, whatever you buy per month. You, and for some of you, you may have to track your expenses for two months to really see where the money's going. But you have to get 
this together before you get your business income to go. Because what you do with your household budget is pretty much going to mirror what you're going to do with your business budget because those are your financial habits. So you straighten out your household budget that's going to help your business budget. Now, once you've done this and you figured out what your household budget is down to the bubble gum. You can't leave anything out. You can't leave out those trips to the strip club. You can't leave out those trips to get your nails done. You can't leave out those trips to go to the movies. Everything that you do on a regular per month goes on this budget. You must also include, if you have a job, those deductions that you don't see, they count. They're part of your budget. They count. Put all of that stuff on there. Now, once you've got it, that's your monthly nut. Double it. So this is what you want. To, this is where you want to be in terms of your business dividend, in terms of what you want to pull off of your business, because you cannot get to a city if you don't have the zip code. I mean, seriously, if you don't know where you're going, it's pretty hard to get there. And then many people are just like that. That's why I always say it's very foolish. It's like how much money you want to make. I want to make as much money as possible. Well, you know, for the day, a dollar might be possible. That might be as much as possible for that day. You don't want that. So become very, very metrically driven with your business and these numbers. All right. And that is the presentation. Let's see what's uh, going on in the question world. Okay. <laughs> Tony, Lord, I believe it's raining all over the world. Rain and snowstorms. <laughs> Richard, I made it. Woo, woo. <laughs> uh, Tony Margin, what's the definite definition example of crazy margins? Uh, crazy margins is say it takes five hundred dollars investment per month. For capital or for expenses for your business, and you make five thousand. Those are crazy margins because it's very rare, but people do it. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be spring, but Mother Nature doesn't care. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Dwayne, the monthly household budget is so very important. Can't emphasize that enough. There's a little secret that if you get paid every two weeks, that if you had a budget, you would have two paychecks free and clear every year. It's just people spend their money. It's like more money comes in, they just absorb it into something. Don't really, really think about it. Uh, MH, in your opinion, is Store Envy, Big Cartel, just as bad of eBay in terms of selling platform? I'm not going to say they're bad, but this is the problem. eBay is the OG, so to speak. Because when we talk about how bad eBay is, we're talking about it from a seller aspect. 90 something percent of the people who use eBay are buyers. So, it's a different experience. Those other places, I don't really, I haven't spent a lot of time evaluating them, but I know this. They don't have the traffic nor the sales as eBay, <clears throat> which is a problem. Yeah, five to ten times. Because the thing is, when you're running your business, say, okay, going back to the 500 and 5,000 example. If you know every month you need $500 to expenses for your business and you're making 5,000, and you know that you don't have to bring any more money to run it, you're in a pretty good position and you can safely pull that money off and not kill it. But say you're making five thousand, but your expenses are thirty five hundred, thirty eight hundred, thirty nine hundred. You know, it, it's a different ball game. Uh, Jonathan, what do you think about paying bills for the fixed amounts instead of ahead of time to get a leg up, i.e., my student loan? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I would agree. I pay my, uh, and I don't really pay a lot of interest, but I pay my car payment the minute the statement drops because that knocks out so much interest. Paying, you know, just you can amortize these. 
if you have like student loans because it's interest your mortgage like like just saying this if you pay your regular mortgage payment and you make two or three principal payments early each year the first 10 years of your loan you may knock out that last 10 to 12 years not even doing you know the bi-weekly mortgage thing just early in the year like say january february because the early early in the loan is when it really matters so you do it in the late in the loan you're still you pay the interest all most loans the interest is at the front of the loan so you want to make principal payments to reduce the amount of money that the interest is calculated on so yeah if um you get in the habit of paying your you know like say paying two payments because let's, let's talk about college loans I have seen people my age with still with student loan payments and they're going to have them for the next five, 10 years. Only way that you're going to get out of that mess is to go above and beyond. So say your student loan payment is 150 bucks a month. You need to figure out a way where you can pay an additional 150 a month to 200 a month to knock that stuff out. Because I haven't had to experience it, but I've watched enough YouTube videos where when you go in forbearance, a lot of these things, the, the interest is crazy because there was one girl, she started out with 76. She went in forbearance. She did some stuff. And now her student loan balance is 92,000. It went up almost 20 G's. There are a lot of people who are caught with that stuff and it's the interest. So you, you've got to really, really whittle down that, that principle. Angela, what did, what did you and your storage business do during the slow seasons, January through May? Uh, those weren't slow months for us. Uh, quickly, I'll just give you our storage auction business. We, not 68% of our sales were generated either online or from online sources. We didn't wait for business to come to us. We went out and got business. We, we, our slow period was August. Our slow period was August. Like, let's talk about now. It's different now than it was because the e-commerce thing was still very new but for years our we didn't even open up from december 25th to maybe february we didn't really open up to the public unless it was like a craigslist sale but the thing is ebay and amazon some of the biggest days are after christmas like the january Let's see. No, December 26th was a big sales day for us. Often eBay gave like a free listing day. So we didn't have slow periods like that because we sold on Craigslist. We sold on eBay. We sold on Amazon. We had a customer list and we had regular customers. So between all that, we, we didn't have like the big, long, slow stretch like a lot of storage auction people did. Sure thing, Jonathan. AC life has gotten disrupted from my end was here a few days back when you offer garage sale book for free. Can you still honor that? <laughs> Whoa, had to walk away from my job a week ago, hustling full time. Glad I found you before I was met with this challenge. Wow, man, that is, uh, that's pretty messed up. Pretty, pretty messed up. Um, essentially, let's see, I will I'll work on that. Let me get back to you on that. That's what I'm going to say on that. Uh, Marcy. Glendon, my resale clothing hustle is just that. Should I even consider my own site? Yes, eBay has the traffic, but you mentioned that eBay eventually will ask sellers to pay shipping and returns. This is how I would do it. I was, you know, if you are still comfortable with eBay and you had not had a lot of issues, because there's some people, nothing's ever happened to them. I would do my own site also and whatever marketing that you do direct people there i would not market for ebay i would not market for to a degree it depends on what you're selling if you're selling a come item i wouldn't really send a lot of traffic to amazon because if you're selling something and there's like 80 sellers with it your, your traffic's going to go to the lowest some of your traffic's going to go to the lowest price but when you do your website make it high-end stuff or higher end, you know, stuff with good price points and good margin. Twenty-five k now seven percent. I remember when that stuff used to be two percent, one percent. Uh, 
slow summer sales, but storage auctions, A to Z says I should buy by in the summer. Yes, our sales weren't slow. In the summer, because everyone else's sales were slow, the cost of merchandise was way cheaper. I could get, like, say it was like 90 degrees July, and it's a 10 by 20. I can get that 10 by 20 for 300, 600 bucks. Three months later, that same 10 by 10, 800 to 1500 dollars. Same one. So, yeah, you buy because. You're getting your merchandise so cheap during the summer. Well, it used to be for the stars. You know, I speak in the past because everything has changed. <clears throat> but for us back then, it made a huge difference because one of the reasons that I have all of these stories to tell you about storage auctions is because I was always buying you. I'll give you another nugget of why I bought so much. Say I'm out and I buy 10 units in a week and I spend two or three grand. It has happened so many times that I would buy one more unit and that one unit would be a, a burner. You know, it's like I spent a thousand, make ten thousand. I spent a thousand. I spent two hundred, make, you know, fifteen thousand. So that one unit readjusted my cost of inventory for the ones I bought. I've never had a business where you can buy something after you bought this other stuff and then it can adjust your prices backwards because at that point, it's like, OK, well, I spent three thousand dollars and I spent, you know, let's just say, including the, the burner unit, I spent four thousand dollars. OK, what we would do is we would take the burner unit because burner units usually have really good stuff and it's so fast. So this one burner unit has gotten me my primary capital that I spent back and it's yielded a profit. And I still have all these other units which I could sell for whatever. And that's one of the reasons that we did the dollar section. Because even at a dollar, we'll still profit because the storage auction business was just so different from anything else I've ever done. But to get back to your question, yeah, it's usually cheaper because there's less people out. Uh, David, did you spend a lot of time going through your list to find the right buyer when it was hard to move goods? Or would you prefer to blow them out fast if you could? Mm -hmm. And what percent of your business could you safely get away with blowing stuff out? <clears throat> I think it was kind of answering some of that. The We put stainless steel microwaves in the dollar section. I would get other dealers to come buy this stuff because they can go sell them for 10. They pay me a dollar and sell it for 10. We had certain things like I had an antique gun guy. Unfortunately, he passed because uh, a lot of people want to use him. I don't care what I had. He would buy it. He would pay me my price. I don't care what I had because I sold him a lot of good stuff. He didn't care. He'd just come get it. So for certain things, I had outlets. I had a guy for vintage clothing. I had an antique gun guy. I had a lady in uh, the city of Decatur who sold mid-century furniture. I So I over the time, I built a lot of outlets for stuff that either I didn't want to mess with or was going to have to sit on too long because the lady from the mid-century place, I mean, you know, she thought she was getting over, but frequently I sold her stuff that cost me five or ten bucks for two, three, four hundred bucks. Then, of course, she doubled or tripled the money, but I didn't really care. Uh, Josh, before you had the warehouse, did you meet people from Craigslist around town? Would you make them come to you? That's a multi layered question. Even when I had the warehouse, certain things, I would just meet people. My famous thing for anything from a cell phone up to an iMac computer is I would meet people in Starbucks. Now, this is my comfort level. I don't know what your comfort level is. Anyone that was buying furniture or a washer and dryer, I had them come to the house or the warehouse. Never had a problem with that. P criminals, for some reason, aren't hip to washer and dryers and certain things. If I was selling a TV I would have them come to the warehouse. Furniture items, uh, toys. I just didn't run into a lot of issues with that. But electronics, I, you know, well, I wasn't selling iPads because they didn't exist at that point. But it for me, I just noticed that household items typically didn't bring out the criminal element. And I never had an issue with that. Uh, Tracy, I told eBay I was done on Friday. This was after eBay put a hold on my PayPal account. PayPal claimed it was a mistake and, and had to get approval to do anything from eBay. 
eBay said PayPal was at fault. I was escalated to four different customer service people in the Philippines with eBay. It's just not worth the frustration anymore. I'm a realtor and real estate is far less stressful than selling on eBay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh at your pain. I have heard similar things from no less than 10 people in the last four days. And, you know, these are there's people I know that because, you know, my Facebook friends are starting to like, yeah, I'm putting some stuff on eBay. And so many people are getting screwed because essentially if you're new and you're going to start putting stuff on eBay and you never had an eBay account or a PayPal account, expect to have holes. And essentially it's going to be PayPal that's putting the hold on there. And they're going to ask you to send certain things in like your driver's license, social security card, proof of address, all kinds of stuff. I actually had, and this is something else that I thought was really, really jacked up. When I had my hold, they wanted me, I had to send in invoices of certain things. Which means they knew the wholesale cost. I wasn't real comfortable with that. Really, really wasn't. Wow. Tracy's been selling for 12 years. A lot of long-term people are saying, screw it. Um, there's, a, there's this video on YouTube. The guy was on eBay like 15 years and they just, they limited his account. You know, I have, like I said, I've talked about my experiences with eBay because a lot of people thought, you know, just to be blunt, they thought I was lying. It's just like, well, no, eBay doesn't do things like this to, you know, because they never had the thing. It's like when you do a lot and sell a lot of different things, your chances are running into situations just exponentially grow. They really do. But. Yeah, the storage auction business, the way we did it. Now, I mean, that's one of the reasons I wrote the book, because I know for a fact, but when we got out of the storage auction business here in Georgia, that 90 something percent of the people who were going out to storage auction sold at the flea market or they had a store or they did garage sales or they set up on the side of the road. Very few were doing Craigslist and very, even very few were doing Craigslist. Cause a lot of people didn't even know about Craigslist and a very few were even doing eBay and Amazon. There was a guy by the name of Vern. He got hipped. He he just took everyone's CDs and said, hey, I'll sell your CDs for you and split the profit. And he was selling them on Amazon. He, I mean, people just like, bam, give him the CDs. And all this media because they didn't want to deal with it. I don't know how that's working out for him, but <clears throat> I know he was probably making crazy money. And, he, you know, but he was retired, I believe. So essentially, he was he he was very smart. Because he knew there was a bunch of people out there. He knew he can get crazy inventory. And he didn't have to pay for it until after it sold. Pretty crafty. All right. It is 452. These are your tasks. I will be here because this is a two-parter. We're going to talk about this some more. Because the first parts of, you know, 30 days to 2500 bucks was to get you motivated, get you started, get you doing stuff. And I remember someone wrote me and it's like they've sold more stuff in the last few weeks than they did all last year and i was like okay honestly were you really trying last year because she's like no no we we're really trying it's just we were not utilizing a lot of our resources we didn't have certain things set up so it was a really really powerful program so with that let me if you want to join oh yeah if you don't have the free audiobook get the free audiobook it's fantastic and this is how you can join. It's a lifetime deal right now because I left a lifetime because a lot of people's like, look, man, just give me a little more time. And I, I was like, fine, I'll just do this until the end of the month. So 400 bucks, you're part of the Facebook group forever and ever. So that's how you get it. Uh, give me two to 24 hours to put you in. And actually, we're going to talk about this, too. I will put this in. So I just sent it to everybody who wants it. And also, I will do this. Everybody wants the audio book. As for the audio book, 
Okay. I think I still have that on Gumroad. Because a lot of people don't like Gumroad. Some people are really loving Square. We're going to talk about Square Market, which I am having a lot of fun with right now. But that will be later. And Because essentially what's going to happen with uh, 30 days. Hold on. I have to do this to be able to send this. And bam, you've got some stuff. All right. Okay, it, my question's kind of backed up on me. Oh, I listened to Jonathan. I listened to it all day at work. Thank you. Yeah, there's more stuff coming out later. I just decided to go ahead and finish up 30 days to 2500 and then I will be dropping a lot of other stuff. All right, it is 4.55. Hopefully you got what you needed. I'll be here again tomorrow at 4 p.m. And this will be the last week. Uh, probably there will not be a Friday session that much I do know because like I said this is going to be two days and then the last few days are going to I'm going to have to move them to the group because I want to keep people because essentially the, the the whole deal was to get people from nothing to 2500 bucks in 30 days the materials already there to do that so this other stuff is going to be in a group like corporations and other things it's going to be a lot of fun and I got a special project I'm working on. Once I get it set up, I will let the people in the group know. All right, it's 4.56. I'm going to shut this out. I want to say thanks to everyone that came out today. Really appreciate your time. And uh, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side. That's about.